We're at OFC 2024, and I'm here with David Hurt. He's the CEO of Infinera, and we're talking trends uh, in the optics industry. David, good to, good to see you again. Always great to see you here. A lot of energy every time you and I meet. A lot of buzz going around the booth and in the show, so it's really good to see you again. It's becoming kind of an annual tradition. It is. Our meet, it uh, is. kind of hash out some of the trends we, we, we think are going to happen, and then probably do a year in review and say, you know, what, what, what happened? What really what happened? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so obviously, I mean, OFC's the biggest show in our industry for optics, so it is as an analyst yeah. where, where we come to figure out what's happening for 2024 and really well beyond as, yeah. in the, the scope of OFC. I'm curious, from your position, I suppose you have both a near-term, well, a near, medium, and a long-term view. Always, what, yeah. What are you seeing as the key megatrends that are driving your customers, network operators, uh, and what are the, the primary challenges that you're hearing about you know, right now in 2024? Yeah, you know what's interesting is there's three segments we kind of look at. We look at the traditional service providers that are out in the, out in the network. Uh, we look at the, the web scalers or uh, ICPs, we call them, uh, content uh, players that are out there. And then we, we, we are looking at people who are actually building out data centers now for the first time. And we, we didn't, you and I didn't talk about that last year. No. And I think the cool thing for us is the same building blocks that we founded the company on, uh, having a photonically integrated circuit that the company actually invented, um, are all applicable across all three of those segments, and they all have the same problems. Right now, traffic is growing. This is not a bubble, right? People have asked me all through, is AI a bubble? No, this is not a bubble. Uh, traffic's been growing since you and I have been meeting at 35% per year. Maybe COVID and the supply chain caused a bit of disruption that's still going on a little bit this year, but AI, machine learning, data center build out growth, continued format changes, you know, 4K to 8K, the number of units, meaning the number of devices we're connecting to is kind of the Medcav's law of the world. Those things are pounding traffic across people like the AT&Ts and Verizons of the world, more importantly across the big data center owners of Microsoft, Google, Meta. And then lastly, the people that are building out these big GPU stacks, my God, they've got a huge problem. How do I get lowest cost per bit and take the power down? And I think it, you know one big theme that you're going to hear this year isn't just AI and everybody trying to brand themselves as AI, mm -hmm. Infinera AI. Uh, it's really about power. How do you get the power down in these platforms? If you think about a GPU stack inside the data center, I think last week NVIDIA had their uh, conference. Yep. They were talking about 130 kilowatts per rack? Yep, yep. People are building data centers now uh, geographically dispersed because the grid can't handle too many of them in the same geography. So our job gets that much harder to be able to drive power down inside the data center, in between data centers, underneath the ocean, you know, and in between long spans on the terrestrial network. For, for the service providers, sure. Yeah. Certainly, um, you know, and, and NVIDIA and GPUs are, are, GPU is the acronym, I think, of, of OFC and probably 2024, and everybody's trying to figure out, you know, kind of wh what's your avenue as, as a company into to that business and, and how. Um, so we kind of would call that more networks. Networks built to support AI. Yeah. And there's also AI for networks, which I think, you know, if we think past OFCs, there was a lot of, you know, using machine learning automation for for telecom, but I think that's still going, but that's sort of a linear, and then this networks to support the AI are really what's you know, skyrocketing and everybody's jumping off. So we talked a lot about drivers, macro trends in the industry and different challenges network operators are, are facing. So how does that kind of boil down to Infinera's investment strategy for, for 2024 and, and going forward? Um, yeah, yeah go no, it's great. I, I think that when I look across the three segments, Again, back to service providers, ICPs, and then people building out the data center. Yeah. Um, they all share common trends. More traffic, uh, less power. And these, you know, inside the data center, the GPUs are hogging the power. So anything networking can do to give more power back is super important. And so we're looking at our investment strategy that goes across kind of food groups. Uh, our photonically integrated circuits are being indexed and invested for uh, Again, heavy capacity, uh, long distance, outside the network, we call those embedded optics. Yep. Uh, that is I6, I7, I8, we have a robust technology investment curve there. 
um, because that traffic continues to grow. And uh, the web scalers, CSPs around the world are having to interconnect all these data centers and all these endpoints in the network. The second piece of that is people now want to use uh, optics to plug into every network appliance out there, routers and switches. You've heard of routed optical networks. Yep, well, yep. we don't sell routers and switches, but we make the optics now. It's hard to believe that these big sleds that we used to plug into chassis, this is an 800 gig hmm. uh, pluggable, right? This is now going into the web scale networks to be able to interconnect, again, at longer distances, lower power, lower cost per bit. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, within here, small fractions of the photonically integrated circuit can be used to connect to GPUs versus traditional ethernet kind of copper-based technologies at 75% lower power. Yeah, so let, let's get into that because this is, uh, you had a couple of announcements coming out in the, in the last month or so. ICD, I think, is, is what we're referring to here yeah. with the in the data center. Historically, correct me if I'm wrong, historically, you have been a data center interconnect as well as a, a telco company. This is very different. This yeah. is inside the data center, and you guys are not a router company. You've you've you've, you've stepped away from that. We we talked about that in the past. So, what exactly? What is what ICE? Do we do? What yeah. is that? Well, and where did it come, come from? Let I mean, me give you the marketing answer. Right, ICE has always been the infinite capacity engine. Yes. But if you think about data centers, what's going on? They're becoming too hot, and so we have a product line, ICE D, iced want to get iced, <laughs> uh, but it's really ICE data center. So there are chips using our photonically integrated circuit that take all the amplification and all the arrays and allow you to connect to the GPU at a much lower power, as I said, 75% less. Now, we've always had that technology, but now that 50% of our business is being driven by the web scalers, that's 35% direct and 15% where they're making the technology decision for another operator in a managed fiber network. By listening to them, we started going, what other problems do you have that, that are lowest cost per bit and lowest power per bit? Yeah. They said, could you just give us the chips for inside the data center? Because as they're buying these GPU clusters, it was an important element to driving down the power. And that could be in something, whether it's a linear drive, PAM4, at speeds of 1.6 terabit, 3.2 terabit, uses the same fab we have. And when we're building big transponders for subsea networks, and you might build 15 or 20,000 of those a year. Right, right. When we're building pluggables that go inside routers and switches and, and metro, that's hundreds of thousands. Yeah. When we're building chips that go inside the data center, quantities are millions, half million, million. And so for us, we run a fab. And every time that fab fills up more, yeah. we're able to get that cost basis and share that with the service providers, the web scalers, and now inside the data center. Yeah, so you've got, you know, you've got the systems, the subsystems, and, and then chips. the chips. Yeah. So how does that, you know, does this really kind of turn turn your business model upside down or, you know, 180 uh, well, maybe? Like, I mean, what, is, is there a massive shift in, in how you guys derive revenue well, moving look, forward? Uh, I would tell you that if you look back uh, three years ago, I'd say 15% of our business was web scale. Yeah. Now, web scale's 50%. Yeah. And that's growing at a more dramatic pace than the service providers. Uh, as you know, you pay attention to, you pay attention to all web scalers, but you know, it's in the top six, seven, eight web scalers drive a majority of the, of the, of the traffic and business. Um, service providers are thousands, and we've got a yeah. great embedded base with service providers. They're going to take longer to put this technology out. Inside the data center, you're talking about a small handful of customers. So over the last five years, we've gone from $700 million of business to $1.6 billion. Mm -hmm. We've improved our margins by 1,100 basis points, and we haven't even started. You know, We've landed our first contracts for 800 gig, 400 right. gig pluggables, and now we've launched this inside the data center. So we've done a nice job of transforming so far, but there's so much more to go. Yeah. So much more to go. Um, and I know and it's going to take time. Sure, sure. For those absolutely. investors that are it's listening. It's new, it I mean. It takes time, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, we talked a lot about the inside of the data center. I don't know, before we wrap up, any other optical innovations 
uh, you think are worth mentioning? Yeah, you, you know, we talk a lot about hardware. We talk a lot about angstrom level physics uh, at what we do. You know, software is going to play a much more dramatic role moving forward. Because if you think about when we talked last time, I talked to you about, a, we, we said there's three drivers. Lowest cost per bit, lowest power per bit, yep. greatest agility. And agility really means how do I only use in the network what I want to use at that time? And almost like a, like, a, uh, like a utility. When you go home, you flip on the lights, they're there, right? Mm -hmm. You have enough power in your, in your home to plug lots of stuff in. So for us, we've, we've put software not only in our systems, but we actually reside software on our pluggables that allows you to only power up and eat what you want to use. So we can have network operators that have a 400 gig pluggable on the edge that are lighting up 400 gig at a time and only powering what they use. Incredibly green. We won the green award uh, from Deutsche Telekom in Europe as a result of that. But that's real economics that that drives our carrier. So watch out for so it's going to be a longer uh, again a longer adoption cycle yep. but this idea of dynamic policy via our xr uh software right uh, is huge our software manager on every platform makes our stuff not only lowest cost per bit lowest power per bit but easiest to use in agile yeah sure yeah i've been following interesting stuff going on with the yeah. xr form been following that for, for several years great so no surprise, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Infinera always has a little bit of a bag of tricks yeah. to, to pull out new, new stuff. So I uh, always enjoy catching up and, and following. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy process. the show again. You I, too. I think it's exciting times. I know we're in a weird portion of the year, I think, for people, but yeah. the future looks bright. Yeah, absolutely. And we want to light it up. Right, right. Optics. Optics yeah, everywhere. And right. the pick. That's right. The pick is here that's and back. Right. All right. All right. Great Thank talking you very to you, much. Yeah. Have a great week. Yeah, you too. All right.